The knife is really one of the fundamental tools of bushcraft, okay? It's really the heart of bushcraft. And one of the things that really separates bushcraft from other outdoor pursuits is with bushcraft, we're not just traveling through an outdoor environment, we're interacting with it, okay? So with bushcraft, for example, we often use the knife for shelter craft, for wood carving, uh, and firecraft, for tonging, okay? So there's anything you usually do in bushcraft revolves a knife. So it's a very, very important fundamental tool, okay? Now, with a knife like this, it's a considerable investment of money. It's $200, okay? So you want to maintain that piece of kit and get the most out of it, okay? Properly maintained, a knife like this should last at least a lifetime, okay? Also, the other thing you want to consider is when you're in the field and you're, you know, using these tools, you want them to be at their maximum efficiency, okay? And you will get the most out of them, okay? And you will be able to perform at your best and do these types of tasks easily if you have a properly maintained tool. Okay, so the focus of this video is not so much of a review of this knife, but how to maintain it. Right now, um, I have to say you're not seeing the knife at its best. As you can see, I've let it go a bit. There's a bit of rust, there's a bit of a uh, pantina, okay? So that's just deliberate to illustrate, you know, the point of how we're going to clean that up, all right? So we can divide any knife into three different sections, sheath, handle, and blade, okay? Now, with zero one one steel, obviously the downside of it is that it will rust easier and develop a pantina than something like a stainless knife, all right? There's my uh, Mora Robusta, right, which is uh, stainless, okay? This is what I use for fishing, okay? Because carbon steel doesn't really work very well in a salt water environment, okay? Um, so if you're near the water a lot, certainly, obviously, you know, you could look at a stainless steel knife or something like uh, the Falcon Even F1, which is uh, uh, BG10. Um, so we're going to go through the three different things, handle, steel, and leather. We'll start with leather, okay? Now, the thing to say, is with a leather sheath like this, you can get over a hundred years out of this sheath, okay, if it's maintained properly, okay. Um, to illustrate that point, I wanted to show you guys this, okay. So this is a leather pouch I use, and I use as a flint and steel kit. I've got my little flint and steel kit in there. Um, this is a valise, Australian made military pouch, made by the, the melee, for the Australian military. It was made about 1883. 1890 all right so it's over a hundred years old okay and it's still in perfectly serviceable condition okay i've repurposed it from an ammunition pouch to a flint and steel pouch but still in perfectly good serviceable condition okay um originally this was designed to take the large rounds for a henry martin rifle okay so that kind of shows you you can get over a hundred years out of a, a piece of high quality leather okay so Again, we'll go back to the sheath, all right? So you wanna treat this with uh, a beeswax product, okay? Now, there's lots of different leather craft products out there, leather leather care products out there, right? There's, there's, there has to be said, there's a lot of junk in Kmart, there's things like this, spray on waterproof stuff, right? That's just junk, right? Um, you wanna get a beeswax treatment as a paste, all right, now the three big names, and the one Rob uses and is very popular at the moment is Optimoff. There's also Snow Shield, and there's also Neat Wax. All right, there'll be a few others as well. But what you want to look for is beeswax made into a paste. All right, so this is Snow Shield. Okay, and you can see it's beeswax, and it's easy to apply because it's made into a paste. All right, that's what we want. Okay, so I would avoid mink coil because that can degenerate the stitching. All right, so with leather, it needs to be hydrated because it's dead skin. So it, it doesn't have a blood supply anymore from the animal. So there's no form of natural hydration. And if you don't do anything, it will slowly, slowly dry out and crack, okay? So once in a while, at least once a year, at least once a year, you get your snow shield or your Optimoff, you get it and you rub it in. The more you use it, the, the more treatment you, uh, you know you'll have to give it all right so easy peasy just with the heat of your hand rub it in make sure you get all the areas you know what I mean? 
very very easy okay and that also help you know will help make the leather a little bit water resistant as well few things you don't want to do so when you get your sheath wet it's the soaking wet you don't want to and you see people do this with boots as well you don't want to put it next to the fire all right you know and, and let it dry out really really fast okay because that can lead to cracking or you know, put it on top of a radiator or near a really you know hot heat source you know what i mean so you know let it dry out naturally in the daylight you know what i mean um, and that will prevent cracking you know what i mean just let it dry out naturally okay you know what I mean? um, the other thing you want to be aware with sheaths like this is with your knife so supposing I'd been doing some food prep or got the knife really dirty we want to clean that knife before we put it away because if we've got you know blood or whatever and we put the knife away dirty that will go on the inside of the sheath all right and then obviously that's very very hard to clean all right so never put a dirty knife in your sheath always clean it first all right and just let it dry if it gets wet it gets saturated just let it dry out naturally don't try and force it okay that would be my 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 advice okay so that pretty much covers the sheath again you should be able to get over a hundred years out of this all right so let's move on to the handle okay now the handle on the woodcrafter is micada all right we have a very nice green micada there all right i do love the uh, handle on the woodcrafter it's such a comfortable handle um now that's pretty much uh, bulletproof, okay? There's nothing you can really do that uh, is going to, um, you know, destroy it. You don't need to treat it with anything or anything like that. Just keep it clean, okay? Um, with wooden handled knives, like older style things, you know, things like, um, you know, there's an old Russell Green Never knife. Really nice uh, vintage knife, this one. I mean, with something like that, we could put a little bit of linseed oil on it, you know, like same way you would do with an axe handle, uh, but with Makata, no need. And obviously with a plastic knife like a, a Mora, uh, there's no need for any kind of maintenance, okay? So that takes us to the other part, which is the steel, okay? So after an extended period in the scrub, in the bush, we might have a bit of a pantina forming and we might have a bit of rust, and we we'll probably want to clean that up okay now some people like pantinas on their knives all right uh, some people will just leave it like that and just sharpen it uh, other people like to keep it clean all right so it's a bit of a personal choice all right um, personally with a knife like this I like to try and keep it clean and keep it pristine okay some people even force uh, pantinas on knives you know, put lemon juice on them and all that kind of stuff um, it was a little bit of a trend for a while Okay, so I'll show you how to clean this guy up and get it back to kind of like a uh, pristine condition, all right? So there's a few different kind of things we can use to clean that, okay? One of the products that's on the market, and there's a few similar type of things, is a thing called Gariflex, okay? And this basically is like a ginormous eraser that you would get at school, or rubber, okay? And we simply rub the metal, and that will start to clean off that surface rust and that pantina. So we'll just do one little area. So obviously you're gonna this is I've let I've let this go quite far. So we just clean that one little area. You see after a minute or even just a few seconds that's starting to clean up. Okay. Okay so I'm gonna work I'm gonna work on this because that's gonna take a you know a good 15 minutes to clean this guy up. So I'm gonna work on him. Uh, I'm gonna show you how, how nicely it can clean up. Another thing you can potentially do as well, get a really, really fine grit sandpaper, wet and dry sandpaper. You know, and you can get like a 2000 grit. And if you want to get rid of that pantina, you want to get rid of that rust, that's another thing you can use as well. So I tell you what, I'm going to just have a little bit of work with this over the next uh, 15 minutes and I'll show you it all cleaned up. Alright, so there you go guys, just um, been working for less than 10 minutes on it and we've got a pretty acceptable result. You know, for a working knife I would say that was kind of like where you'd want it at, you know what I mean? We could go further, we could even buff that up to a factory finish, do you know what I mean? But for a working knife we're probably about there. 
Um, a few common sense type things. Obviously, when this is the Garflex, which is an abrasive block, different brand names, okay. Uh, so when you're working, obviously this is the blunt side of the knife, so you want to work that way. Obvious reasons, never like that. Bad idea, okay. Other thing about knives as well is when you get back home, uh, never put a knife like this through the dishwasher, okay, because it will ruin the temper on the knife, okay. Dishwashers and knives is a big no-no. And also with a knife with a wooden handle, like the Russell knife there, it'll often the, uh, the warp, the high, the high temperatures will not only ruin the temper of that knife, but it will also warp the wood and you'll find the, the, the handles falling off, so, um, you know. Knives and dishwashers is a big, big no-no, okay? I'd never leave a knife like that in the kitchen uh, where one of my family members would uh, be tempted to put it through the dishwasher, do you know what I mean? Um, but very, I mean, I just love this knife. Great knife, uh, properly maintained like this, should last a very long time. I uh, hope you found um, those tips and tricks useful.